outros have always been this important element of any show almost as important as the openings but obviously not nearly as strong as the actual show at hand in jojo's case there was this certain amount of importance for the ending because this is as much involvement as we'll get from the creator himself hirohiko araki see contrary to popular belief not all creators of a manga will be there the whole way on the adaptation they have things to do obviously and this is usually left up to the creative directors the studio at hand and basically everyone else involved director naokatsu suda had something to say about this in his interview that i saw at anime expo 2018 he was asked what are the secrets to creating an opening and ending sequence for jojo's he answered that the opening sequence needs to serve as an intro to the show but to also get the audiences hyped up the ending sequence though it needs to leave audiences feeling like ah man it's done come on and this interested me because i could see the direction taken for this type of stuff but when he mentioned araki that's where i knew where the line stood he was asked about how closely does he work with Araki on the music choices and the opening and ending sequences. It turns out that Araki really wasn't one to have his hand in the openings, but in the endings, that's where Araki definitely got himself involved, providing both art and music choices. Then that's when I got through all of the endings a few times over to finally solidify my thoughts on all of this. You notice the symbolism for what the endings hold, but my focus is more so on the direction and reason on why we have what we have. It all began with Roundabout by Yes, a track that is now strongly recognized as a JoJo song. It was a great way to end off an episode with a sense of, oh man, what have they got themselves into now? I can't wait for the next one. And it works great in both the sense of danger and even hype for the parts that it was involved in. It was a great cliffhanger episode with the right beat that fits into the respective parts that it's in. Along with that, you have the reasoning of the song itself and the art being used throughout the ending that backs it. All of it being tied back into the fate intertwined deeper than blood and how the journey itself truly came full circle. There was a lot more to the hieroglyphics at hand but for the gist of it all that's what kept it great. The track itself having strong influence on tone because really without it, the art is missing a huge piece. Roundabout along with the other endings was chosen by Araki and like the other endings a general consensus by the staff had to have been made to pick said song. Araki usually gives them a list of songs to choose from for the ending. But you notice that this was really something to be placed in so perfectly into Jojo like it was meant for it. Then that moves on into the other endings. Walk Like an Egyptian is probably one to duke it out between itself and I Want You for Best Creative Design, but the song itself isn't what gets me the most. Probably because the season is being used on, maybe not. It's being used on the first season, which means it's just the general journey of Egypt before we actually get into the Nine Glory Gods, which is great and perfectly fine for what it is, but I actually want to focus my point on Last Train Home. Last Train Home by the Pat Metheny Group is probably the most JoJo outro we'll get for what it was meant for and what it put on us. Music has always been this huge influence for JoJo, but Araki truly knew what he was doing when it came to this ending. It's actually revealed that Pat Metheny has been this large influence for Jojo due to Araki writing to a lot of his music. For example, the album As Falls Wichita, So Falls Wichita Falls was an album by Pat Metheny and Lyle Mays that was used during the writing of Steel Ball Run. The strong ties and writing of these countrywide journeys by Araki connecting in ways that we might not see instantly but very much are there. You could potentially listen to Last Train Home while finishing up Steel Ball Run and you find yourself with this feeling reminiscent to when Stardust Crusaders was going on or when you were watching it. It was a beautiful yet painful ending. I remember first hearing and having this feeling of sadness as if I already lost a character and well honestly I kind of thought that because it was episode 25 and honestly I thought I lost Kakyoin but I was wrong, no surprise there. And even with the moments to where we do have all these casts it was this overwhelming feeling of ending. Not just that the episode was over, but the journey itself is actually coming to an end. And man, it was doing its job of making me feel what it was meant for when it came to actually nearing the end. It also didn't help that I actually picked up on a couple of little symbolism things going on here and there in the ending that made me think about what we really have here. But while the journey will end, not everyone will be on the same train home. But even with what happens, finishing the anime gave you this sense of happiness when you saw the ending for the last time. The journey may be over, but what we experienced on this journey will live on through each character. 
I don't have much to say on I Want You because I felt like it falls in line with Walk Like an Egyptian where the art itself is more so the gift and the music has a little clean vibe going on for the ending. Now with all of this, I know that people want me to get on the most recent ending, Freaking You by Jodeci. Here's the thing, the song itself is not the problem at all. Trust me, if lyrics are an issue to you, then you can refer to the other songs I've mentioned here. Roundabout was written more so about coming home or going around, and Last Train Home doesn't even have any lyrics. The instrumental is great too for Joe to see. The only missing direction here is the art itself. The character renders were made great with all of them doing their little respective JoJo poses, but the thing is, it's missing a direction in comparison to the other endings. Especially with having such a layered opening, you would expect the ending to have something to match the terms of creative direction. You can look at all the other endings and see a remote touch of a rocky or even just large involvement, but with part 5's ending there's just something missing. I'm not going to be expecting any changes in the ending or just in general, so I'll cut my losses with trying to suggest anything in the art because there's no real point to mess around with that and plus it's like, does Araki even watch my videos? What the fuck? Though I do love the effect of what's going on, honestly, because the background gives it this feel of old school PlayStation days to where I'm just actually able to leave a CD playing and listen to it all day while doing nothing. Jodeci is amazing people, just if, if you haven't heard about the group or just that much of R&B in general, like, Araki is telling you, you need to get your palette out there. Just, you can't just listen to insert genre here. You gotta, you gotta broaden your horizons. But what's my main conclusion to all of this? Because everything needs an ending. The last chain home ending is what held every element of what a JoJo ending is to be. Jodeci is amazing and roundabout is legitimately scary with how well it fits into JoJo and all in all, any cliffhanger memes, really. And thank you all for watching. I've had this video sitting here since Anime Expo to finally, and it's just, I, I finally went about it, and it actually was, works great for the time, like really. And more videos coming soon. If there's any ideas as to what you guys want to see for a Halloween special, I am all ears. I already got one thing planned, but you know, I love October, so I'm really down for more. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. I've been thinking of making a Patreon, but I'll be like, I'll do like one more analysis video and then see what direction I actually want to take that in. Maybe a Patreon, maybe not. But until then, peace out and Godspeed.